So you are probably hearing out from the news that we, as humanity, have some major problems. You know, the global warming, the climate change, I mean, the inequalities between societies and all the things that we, as humanity, are doing wrong. However, we were not so naughty in the past. In the Holocene period, for example, 10,000 years ago, we were pretty living in harmony with other species. So I know that we're not living in the same epoch with dinosaurs, but since we became the dinosaurs of our epoch, the Anthropocene, we became a threat to the biosphere. So uh, we were neither more resistant or more powerful than the other species, but we had a huge ability on cooperation and creativity. And uh, thanks to our abilities, we, got, we became the ruler of the Earth now. So uh, we got so bigger and bigger, we got so powerful and powerful, and now we are in a place that we are running out of energy. So energy is the problem, guys. To understand this problem a bit more efficiently, I'm going to show you an equation. So it's a well-known equation to calculate the energy consumption. Uh, the N represents here the number of people living on a place, and then we multiply this by the number that represents how rich these people are, so that we can understand you know, how much of an energy they can buy. So gross domestic product divided by the number of people, and at last we multiply this by the equation that gives the conservation. So when we look at the outcomes of this equation, we see that our consumption today is around 20 terawatts. Uh, and until 2050, in 2050, we're going to need 12 terawatts more that you cannot see now, but 32 terawatts. So we're going to need 12 terawatts more, trillion watts more. So, uh, to understand, you know, whenever I talk with my friends about this topic, they mostly say, you know, we have the advantage, advantage of energy now. So um, 12 terawatts is not a big number. We can solve this problem by using nuclear plants and so. But uh, we should first understand what, what 12 terawatts means. So 12 terawatts is equal to 12,000 gigawatts. And for those who are saying, you know, the nuclear plants is our answer, the fun fact is, one nuclear plant can only produce one gigawatt of energy. So, uh, quick maths, you know, 12,000 gigawatts we're going to need until 2050. Uh, 12,000 data that makes, 12,000 more uh, nuclear plants that make. So, we have to build 12,000 nuclear plants. So, one nuclear plant every day until 2050. And we have to renovate them too. Uh, not that I don't like nuclear energy, but it really is a big problem now. So, uh, since the theme of our event today is mimesis, and we have to get inspiration from somewhere, think in basics, think of us for example. Where do we get the energy from? So, we eat plants, we eat meat. So, for example, we eat meat. Animals, we eat animals. The anim where, do, where do animals get the energy from? They eat plants. And where do they get the energy from? They get the energy from the sun. So keep it in mind, maybe that has something to do with our answer. Uh, another fun fact is, you remember the numbers, you know, 30, 32 terawatts, that oh, lots of nuclear plants and so stuff. The energy transmitted from sun to earth only in one hour is enough for us to consume in one year. So maybe we have to think about this topic a bit more. So. Uh, uh, maybe you might say, you know, the problem is solved, we can uh, use solar plants everywhere, we can build bigger ones, uh, but nothing is that easy to solve in energy industry. So the first problem is, uh, using the energy is not the big problem, you know, we can use energy by using solar plants, but the thing is we have to store the energy too, because we don't have sun at night, and we have to use this energy at night too. Uh, and uh, when you look where the sun shines, where the sun is, for example in Africa, um, the, these places are poor, so they can't buy those storage methods. And um, they can't buy those storage methods. So the first thing they have to do, uh, we have to do, is that the new technique has to be cheap so that everybody can reach it and collect the energy transmitted from sun to earth. 
the second problem is a bit more human-based and a bit more complex to understand, but um, until today, energy production has always been based on major powers. You know, the um, governments, the energy production companies, uh, those decision makers. So they decide on how much of an energy you can get and how much of a, how light of a light, light bulb you can be. And I don't know if you're interested in history, but whenever there is a conflict or uh, there is a war, there is always a paragraph uh, that had to be, that, that the energy that had to be shared. So uh, if there is an energy and it, it has to be shared, we have to be careful about what we are saying because it causes conflicts. Uh, so the new epic, and I'm not even talking about uh, the decision makers, so one day they might say, uh, okay, I, I'm like, I don't care about global warming, I don't want to use renewables, we're just going to use coal, and uh, you know what will happen? We're going to die. And uh, that's what we don't want. So the new epic uh, has to be sustained, it has to be based on sustainability, and it has to be sustained. The energy production has to be based on individual powers so that there would be no energy to be shared. You should produce your energy and, and so much that you want, so there would be no energy to be shared, just like in liberal economics. So uh, at Howard University, uh, Nosser Lab, Daniel Nosser, a well-known scientist in that respect, uh, has mimicked the, um, the photosynthesis method. In his uh, work, Artificial Photosynthesis, he found a way to split uh, oxygen and hydrogen from water, and by using an enzyme, we can turn this hydrogen into a biological fuel so that we can use this energy, I mean the energy transmitted from sun to earth, whenever we want. And it's cheap, and it's easy to use. Uh, by, by only using an um, artificial leaf, we can get this energy. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the answer for our problem, and we have to think about this topic. Keep it in mind. Another fun fact is, uh, you remember the number, 32 terawatts, we have to build 12,000 uh, nuclear plants. Uh, the fun fact is, Harvard University pool can store 38 terawatts of energy in it. So, 6 terawatts, you can use whenever you want. No problem. Um, the world is becoming a much more harder place to live. Uh, and during his time in Siberia, Peter Kropotkin has observed the toughest conditions on the Earth, one of the coldest places on the Earth. Unlike other continents where everybody is fighting against each other, and there is always a competition, the one who can cooperate can, could also survive. So uh, the world is also similar, and the world is becoming a much more harder place to live. And you remember, we, remember, we get the inspiration from nature, but maybe we can get the inspiration from our nature, from humanity too, because we did it in the past. We used cooperation and creativity to come to this world, that, uh, to, to, to us, that we are now. Uh, so, uh, according to Kropotkin, there are three principles of futuristic society. The first one is cooperation. We have to be cooperative so that we can uh, collect this energy. And the second one is liberty. We should be liberals. And the third one is we should be equal so that everybody can reach what they want and you will not, not be fighting against each other. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this earth will cool down. I start among all the stars, one of the tiniest. I mean a grain of glitter in the blue velvet. I mean this huge world of ours. Thank you.